Hello, I'm Loretta Hayes from Hayes Sewing Machine Company in Wilmington, Delaware, and welcome back to our creative videos. Now, in the past, we have done some uh, videos for using quilting rulers uh, on the domestic machines. And so we've had some requests to how do I use uh, quilting rulers on a long arm? What are the tips and tricks? So this is what we're going to do this time. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing that you need to know about um, working with a long arm is the presser foot is very much the same as a domestic uh, machine. It is completely round and the needle goes right down in the middle of the foot and it is a quarter of an inch from the needle to the outside of each one of the, the feet. Can you get it? So, so Pam says, show it again. So uh, the needle here is a quarter of an inch from all of the edges of the foot. And you'll notice that the foot is raised up so that when we go to put a ruler up against it, uh, it's going to make it so that the ruler isn't going to want to pop up on top. Now, one of the really cool things that you can get for uh, a long arm is if you're uncertain or that you're new to ruler work, they make something called a sure foot. And let me just grab that. So the sure foot looks like this, and what you'll see is the actual foot itself is about double the height. So it's really um, a ruler foot, you know, it's like a ruler foot with training wheels. Uh, just kind of guarantees that you're not going to inadvertently put your ruler up on top of uh, the foot itself. So that is something that will fit on a lot of long arms. Uh, if you're uncertain if it'll fit on your long arm, just give the store a call and we can, we can let you know. So the first thing is that foot. So the foot is very much like a domestic machine. The second thing is if you have a Bernina or you have a uh, maybe larger baby lock, a deeper throated baby lock, then you'll find that your rulers are a quarter of an inch. And that is true also of a long arm. So the thickness of our ruler is going to be a quarter of an inch. Be aware that there are low bar rulers available that are about an eighth of an inch as opposed to a quarter of an inch. And so when you are working with your long arm, you must use the quarter of an inch. Those low bar rulers, if you have a, you know, a low bar machine, are not going to transfer over to the long arm. The problem would be that with the eighth of an inch ruler, that there's a really good chance that it would slide underneath the presser foot. All right, so... We're going to go ahead and get set up for our rulers. And if you're looking for basic rulers and have not done rulers before, your number one ruler is going to be a straight ruler. It is what I refer to as the non-sexy ruler, uh, but honestly, it is the ruler that I use the most. And there are lots of choices for straight rulers, but one that I have uh, really fallen in love with is the Good Measure Straight Ruler. It has all kinds of markings going uh, along the length of the ruler, but it also has all kinds of angles on the ruler. So it's going to have the normal 45, which most rulers have, but it's going to have 60s and 30s. It even has like 22 and a half and 15s. So if you're doing quilting on, say, something like a Mariner's Compass, which has those very skinny uh, angles, you'll have those angles on the ruler uh, to work with. So very, very nice ruler to have. The other cool thing I like about the Good Measure rulers is they already have some texture on the back of the ruler. However, I really do like, particularly with long arm work, uh, to add a little bit of handy grip to the back, even though it has texture. So handy grip comes in a package like this. 
Um, it looks like this. So it comes in, a, in strips and you have kind of a grid. I almost never use it as a one inch grid. I'll cut it in half and maybe have like a half inch one. And so you simply peel the back, which is probably going to be the most challenging thing on this video. We'll get it. There we go. All right, so you peel the back and then you take it and you stick it on the back of your ruler. So when you are doing uh, the handy grip, you probably on the straight ruler, we probably don't need quite that much. But what you're looking for is when you put your ruler down on your uh, machine, that when you wiggle it side to side, there shouldn't be a lot of slide to it. What we don't want to be doing is traveling against the ruler and having the ruler move from our position. If you flip your ruler over and you see without the handy grip, you can see when I wiggle it, it just moves really, really easily and you don't really want that happening. All right, so we have our straight ruler all prepared. Now, the thing that is entirely different uh, on a long arm versus a um, domestic machine is that you must have a ruler base on your machine. And there is a ruler base available for every long arm. I'm gonna slide, I think I'm gonna slide to that end, Pam, so that you can see what a ruler base looks like. Don't store your rulers on your, your base of your machine, guys. All right. So this is a ruler base, and it goes on to the, basically the free arm of the machine. It just slides on. Um, it is a plexiglass base that gives you structure. So I personally leave my ruler base on all the time because oftentimes if you're new to long arming, the bounciness of the quilt uh, is distracting. If you're following a line or, you know, you're trying to work within a certain area, that kind of up and down is unusual. It's, it's a normal long arm thing, but if you're coming from a, a domestic machine where your quilt was on a hard base, it's kind of a hard transition to do. So what happens with the ruler base is because it's physically attached to the machine, it actually moves with the machine. So you'll see, here's my edge of my ruler base under my quilt, and if I move it over here, it's moving with the sewing machine. And so when you do that, uh, when you have a ruler base on, you don't have uh, the issue with rulers rocking. And really there is no, you're, you're gonna get caught if you don't have a ruler base. You think you can hold the ruler and it'll pop up at the most inopportune time. So we want to go ahead and we want to make sure that we have our ruler base installed. All right, so let's talk about the straight ruler. Um, straight rulers, just like with the domestic, what I love about it is you're not having to turn the quilt, which you can't do because your quilt is on the frame, um, but you can sew any direction using your straight ruler. So when you start out, you're going to come in and you're going to take and you're going to drop your needle you're going to bring the needle back up and there's a button on your handle to do that and you're going to pull hard and that's going to pull your bobbin thread up. Just like any free motion, uh, you really want that bobbin thread on top of the quilt because otherwise, you know, Murphy's Law says it's going to get caught up and it's going to kind of travel with your stitching, which then means you've got some fairly interesting seam rippering to do on the back. So once I have the threads, two threads up, I'm going to hold both of them in my hands. And you can see I kind of wrap them around my fingers so that the machine can't pull it out of my hand. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to do just a couple of stitches. So I shift the machine just slightly. I bring it back. And so we've anchored in our thread. Now, if you're like me and your quilts are mainly for uh, gifts and uh, for personal use, uh, you know, they're for the kids to wrap up in front of the television in, then it is perfectly fine to go ahead and snip your tails. 
if you are doing quilting uh, for a, a quilt show, so your quilt is going to be judged, you would leave those threads long, and when the quilt is off the frame, you would take a hand needle and bury those uh, threads in the middle of the quilt, in the batting area, because that's one of the things that quilt judges look for. All right, so we are now anchored on. Uh, when I do uh, straight line work, I tend to do a slightly larger stitch to kind of accentuate the straight line work. So I'm generally between 10 stitches and 12 stitches uh, per inch. And you can do that right on the front of your machine. I have my machine set up for needle stop down. So every time I stop, the needle's gonna hold my place. Uh, and I have it in what is referred to as cruise mode, which means that uh, when I pause, the needle's still gonna take a couple of stitches, which will remind me to turn off the machine before I shift my ruler. So we're gonna come in, I'm gonna put my ruler up here in the front, and of course you've got two choices. You could have it back here. I've always found that I have more control if I have the ruler in the front, so you might wanna try that. And so we're gonna turn our on button on, and we're just gonna sew along the edge of our ruler. Okay, we'll come to the end, we'll, we'll, we'll take, we'll hit our button and turn it off. So my one rule for ruler work on a long arm is I never move my ruler while the machine is running. So I always turn the machine off and then I will come in and move my ruler again. I also don't stitch from edge to edge on the ruler. I tend to work in kind of like the beefy part of the ruler, the middle part of the ruler. I'd much rather shift, stop and shift uh, my ruler. I find when I get to the very outer ends, I sometimes will just dip around the side or I'll find that my ruler is kind of off the base of the ruler and so it tends to do a little bit of hopping. So I'm always kind of working in the middle and we'll go ahead and we'll line up. So if I'm doing a long line, I'm not worried, I'm not looking for a, ro for a quilting ruler that's 18 inches long. I actually prefer one like this where I can really grip my hand on it and I'm just gonna move the ruler as I need. So we'll start the machine up again and we'll come along and then we'll go ahead and we'll stop the ruler. So the great thing about rulers is that you can go in any direction. So uh, I've used the analogy in the past. Uh, you think of a log cabin block. You've got that little baby square inside that, that log cabin block in the center. And if we want to accentuate that square um, with the ruler, it's super, super easy. We can now take it and we can move our ruler so that our ruler is going on the side. So I'm gonna be going back to do my little square here. And you have a choice. You can put the ruler on this side of the foot or you can put the ruler on this side of the foot. And here's a trick. If you put it on the left side of the foot, what happens is the ankle of the foot is, will support it so that the ruler won't pop up. Um, I often refer to that as uh, I use the left side of the foot as like training wheels. I am much more secure on that left hand side of the foot than I am on the right hand side of the foot. So if I have a choice, I'm always on that left hand side. So we're going to come in and I'm going to just go back. So we're just going to come back. If we're doing a two inch block, okay, we can just go ahead and do our two inch block because I have one inch lines. I'm sewing from one line to the next, the next two inch lines. But remember, you know, I'm working on just this flat piece of fabric. Most of the time you're going to be on a quilt. So you're just going to be following the edges of the block. So don't make it too hard. Then we're going to come in and we're going to turn our ruler and we're going to line up once again. I prefer the front. So we'll go ahead and we'll go our two inch line going there. We'll stop there. And then we'll come and we'll turn. And once again, I like to be on that left side if I can. And I'm going to just go ahead and run down. And so we've very simply made a square super, super easy to do. Now, if you're doing things like angles, that's where the markings on the ruler come in. So we've got kind of a line here. So imagine this was a seam and maybe we want to kind of make a, a chevron shape coming down. 
So I can decide what I would like. The most common one is a 45 degree um, because, you know, it makes that right angle to it. But you could do any of the shapes, you know, depending on what your quilt is doing. So if we come along, I'm lining up. Remember, we're not sewing on the markings. We're lining the marking, the 45 degree line on a seam or on a previous row of stitching, which then makes this edge a 45 degree. And so we can come in and we'll sew down a little bit. We'll get ever, wherever I want to be. We'll then stop. Then I want to come and I want to do a 45 degree here. So I could line up off of this line up here, but here's a little trick. If you come in and you just flip it so that one of the lines that is going across the ruler is lined up with that line, for the 45 degree only, that works perfectly. So I could then come and I can go back the other direction. I would come to my seam. And then I could go ahead, I can line up again and work my way down. Now, one of the things that I find uh, that I do a lot with rulers is echoing. And one of the great things about the ruler foot is it is a quarter of an inch from the needle to the edge of the foot. So if you look at some of these like uh, quilts that you see on Pinterest where there's lots and lots of echoing, they did not do a lot of marking. All they really did was they used the presser foot. So if I come and I sew forward just a little bit, now the back of my foot is right along the back of my stitching line. I can then go and I can line up my ruler so that my ruler is lined up right with my stitching line. And off I go. and I can stitch to there. Now I'm, what I'm doing is I'm kind of taking a look at this row right here and seeing if I'm lined up in that section. And you know, it's lined up looking pretty good, certainly close enough for government work here. And so we'll go ahead and we'll run along and go back to the next. So then we can go ahead, if we're gonna echo again, I'll line up my ruler so I can travel a little bit. I do like to use my ruler, you know, a little bit of OCD there. And so we'll come in, we'll line up the next one. Line up our ruler again. And you've got these great echoes on there. So straight rulers, um, you know, if you're doing straight lines going horizontally or vertically, you could use a channel lock on, on your machine to do that, uh, which we've done in a previous video. But things like I want to do diagonal lines, I want to go around a particular shape, then definitely the straight ruler is going to be the best. So definitely not the sexy ruler. However, the most commonly used one. The second most commonly used ruler is a ruler that has circles on it. And probably my favorite one is the HQ Swiss cheese template and it's the big one. They make a smaller one with smaller uh, circles. And you get three circles on one ruler, which is really cool. The other cool thing about it is it has these openings on each one of the circles so you can get in and out of the ruler without having to knot off and break your thread. So once again, you'll see I've got all kinds of handy grip on the back side of my ruler and we're going to go ahead and we can come in. Now there are two ways that you can enter a circle with an opening or really any shape that has an opening like this. The first way is you can raise up your needle and the ruler will go over the ankle and it will set down into that. Can you show me again without your hand being in the way? Uh-huh, sure. <laughs> All right, better? Mm -hmm. All right. So the needle is up. We're going to slide the ruler in and it goes right over the ankle and then we're set and ready to go. So that is way number one. 
Way number two is really the way I do it more often. Because I often want to hold the place where I am starting out, I like to have my needle down. But what that does is you can't get your ruler, it's kind of fighting with the foot. So what I do is with the needle down, I will take my finger, go underneath the ankle, and manually raise up the foot, and I can slide that in. And to me, I get the best of both worlds. I've got the, the uh, needle placed exactly where I want it to be, and I'm not going to lose my place on it, and I can slide my ruler in. So when you're doing a circle, we're going to come in, we're just going to snug that up against the foot. And the circle is a little bit more interesting in the fact that we're going to have to stop and kind of move our hand around. Remember, you're always holding the ruler with your right hand because your left hand, uh, excuse me, I have problems with left and right. You're always holding the ruler with your left hand and the, you're driving with the right because your stop start button is on that side. All right, so we're gonna go along and we're gonna go ahead and do our circle. So we're gonna come along and there's gonna be a point where you're gonna feel like the ruler is getting out of control. Like you feel like it's sliding a little bit. If it's sliding a lot, put more handy grip on it. But if it's just the normal kind of circle thing, then it's not a problem. We're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna maneuver our hand again. So remember the rule that I have. I never shift my ruler or for that matter, I never shift my hand while the machine is running. So I'll turn the machine off and then I'll rearrange my hand and we'll come around. Now when I'm coming back here, I'm gonna have a problem here soon. I'm gonna hit my, my thumb. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just rotate my hand around. And we'll just continue our way around until I can't go any further. And then I'll maneuver it around. So when you do a circle, okay, it's a case of moving that hand around and keeping it out of the way. Now, what's really cool is if I wanted to go ahead and do another circle, let's say we do a smaller one. Uh, let's actually do it this direction. My hand shouldn't be in the way that way. And so we'll come in and we'll take and go around. And so we'll come around and then we'll stop. Now, if you want to do rows of circles, which is a very common thing for me in sashing and skinny borders, uh, it's so much more interesting to do a row of kind of pearls than it is to just like stitch in the ditch. So if I'm doing that, I need to get back over to this left-hand side of the circle. Um, and so what I want to do is before I take my hand up off the ruler, I want to go 360 around and then I want to go 180 back. So we're going to come back and we're going to stitch over. And you can pick the side, you know, you can do it on the top or the bottom, doesn't make any difference. And so we're going to come along and boom, there we go. Now we can come in and we can slide our ruler and we can then go ahead and maneuver around. And it does not matter whether you go, um, clockwise or counterclockwise. I find for myself, I go like clockwise for a whole bunch of them and then I go counterclockwise. It just, the brain kicks in somewhere along. But you can see how cool that is. And if I wanted to change, and let's say we wanted to do a big circle and then a small circle, then what I can do is I can bring my small circle in. Oops. And then we'll go back and then I can come in and I can do my other size circle again. So now you're starting to get like different size circles. How cool is that? All right. So let's slide this out so Pam can come in a little bit with the camera. 
and so you can see and no matter how much practicing I do in my regular free motion I am never going to be able to do a perfect geometric circle without a ruler so like I can do bubbles I can do pebbles um, but if I want geometric circles I'm definitely doing um, a, a, a ruler all right so that is the second most popular because people want full-on geometric circles the third most popular ruler is a wave ruler because honestly you could take and do an entire quilt with your wave ruler so one of the cool things that good measure has done is good measure does wave rulers that are in a package so you get small medium and large in your your package so the wave rulers no matter what rate wave ruler you're doing you're going to find that you have two waves so you've got one on one side and one on the other and so oftentimes i'm using like the the uh up and down one, uh, the smaller one, more condensed one, for doing things like borders, because it almost looks like a serpentine stitch. Um, and the larger one, the more organic one, I might use if I was gonna do like the centers of feathers or uh, even just kind of an organic wave going across. So let's see how to do this. The first thing that you need to have for a wave is you need to draw a line or you need to have a seam. It doesn't make any difference. Um, so I'm going to have my line drawn here. Okay, and I remember when you're drawing your line, make sure it's something you can remove. So I've just chalked it with a choco marker. Um, but we need something to line up with. Now, the weird thing about wave rulers is that they have marked the line for the center of the wave. Better? Walk the line of the center of the wave. However, when I look at that, I'm like, there's no way that that's the center. And every single time they're right. So take them at their words. So if we're going to line up the line, we're going to line, if we want the center, so like if we had a border here and we wanted the wave to be in the middle, we would draw a line down the center and we would line up the center line. And so we'll come in and we'll line it up. So that's on my line and I'm going to go down. All right, and we're going to go over. And we're going to go to the, the bottom. Now, one of the really cool things about the Good Measure uh, Wave Rollers is that they have a stop. So like you come and it's gonna physically stop you in the right location. And then all I have to do is I'm gonna take my Wave Roller and move it over, lining up the center line again, and then I can continue my wave. and then slide it along and continue my wave and work my wave again. And the same thing applies to a wave. Uh, if you wanted to take and you wanted to echo it, you could go ahead and move up about a quarter of an inch. We could line the wave ruler right up with the line of previous line of stitching that I've done. And voila, we have just echoed the wave. So I hope that this has given you some ideas. Pam's adjusting the camera here. <laughs> so that I, I hope that this has given you some ideas of how to do this on your long arm. There really are great uh, comparisons between doing quilting rulers with your domestic machine and doing it with a long arm. Uh, the things that are different is you must have a ruler base. Don't try this without a ruler base. Um, and then if you remember that rule of don't move your ruler or your hand on the ruler while the machine is running. 
Always make sure you turn it off. You can do any shifting you want and then turn it back on to get it to get uh, started again. So I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and we will see you next time.